This is the Telika volcano, one of the most active volcanoes in the world. In fact, it had a surprise eruption just a couple months ago when a group of tourists was at the top right next to the crater. And tonight, we're trading in our warm, comfy bed to sleep next to the crater on top of an unstable ball of boiling lava. I don't like that. <laughs> what we're really hoping for is that we'll get to see lava bubble up from the center of the earth here. That has been on my bucket list for years. And maybe to not become a human barbecue in the process. Nicaragua has a whopping 19 active volcanoes. The volcano-related activities here can get wild. Like volcano boarding, where you go down a steep slope covered in volcanic rock on a thin wooden board at speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. The Cerro Negro volcano is the only place in the world where tour companies are crazy enough to let you do this with zero experience. All right, just 45 minutes more to go to climb this little steep volcano. How are the troops? This board is heavy. I think it's like 18 pounds-ish. Volcano boarding started with an Australian guy who stole a refrigerator from his hotel, dragged it up Cerro Negro and actually served down the volcano on the fridge. It wasn't fast enough to his liking though, so he later used a front door to go down even faster. So I should probably mention that I have a bit of a fear of heights and uh, I don't like fast things that require good balance because my balance is not that great. This is going to be a challenge for me. Look at that view. Unbelievable. There's another volcano over there. Whose idea was this? This was my idea. This was a bad idea. From zero to hundred, how much are you regretting it? To be honest, seriously considering faking a stomach bug or something just to get out of doing this. Look at that. You have to go down that way. So you feet, they are never ever on the board. If you do this, boys going to sink. Like uh, Titanic, you know the movies? That's why you feet, <laughs> they have to be outside but also on the ground. I'm not sure if that's supposed to make you feel better or not. <laughs> Certain death, here I come. It was surreal to be on top of an active volcano at sunset. Tell me whatever you want in Spanish. Watching the first people get on their boards and disappear into the abyss as the slope down got steeper and steeper. This is not the place to face plant on the way down because volcanic rock isn't exactly as forgiving as snow. And this is what it looks like when one of the guides comes down the slope. <laughs> wow, that's ballsy. I don't know why I was so scared. Well, I do know why I was so scared. I mean, look at it. I wish I could go again. I love this. It was so much fun. <laughs> it, was, it was really thrilling. Whoa, I was steep. It was fast. Steep. The, it was the steep. last part was really fast. Yeah, very fast. So glad I did it. It's a good thing I didn't worry about it for six days before doing this. Oh, wait, you did. The bus ride back to town was not your ordinary bus ride. Everyone got free rum and cokes. Good morning. We're having a little bracky and some coffee to get us going in the morning. Life could be worse. And I have traditional Nicaragua breakfast, which is rice and beans, some fried eggs, some cheese, 
and some fried plantain chips. It's actually really, really good. I love this breakfast. Pancakes. <laughs> Today, new day, new volcano activity. That pretty much sums up life in Nicaragua. Today, Today. <laughs> we are <laughs> sleeping <laughs> on an active volcano. The thought of sleeping on top of a very active ball of lava is kind of nerve-wracking, especially after we heard a few more stories yesterday about unexpected explosions on the Talika volcano, the exact one we'll be sleeping on tonight. But we came here to see lava, and we're not leaving Nicaragua until we fulfill that mission. Today we're going on a smaller tour in another company that's going to be just us. The guide's gonna be here in about 30 minutes, and I haven't finished packing yet. We're definitely going to be needing these babies. <laughs> Camera, more cameras. <laughs> and we also have about eight liters of water for the two of us. Pretty much everything else our guide is supposed to bring. So fingers crossed he doesn't forget the tent, the sleeping bag. All of the stuff one needs to spend the night at the top of an active volcano. Lava shield. All right, let's go. Time to rock. Yeah, time, rock. Time, time to lava make. We left the city and drove out into the countryside of Nicaragua. Our driver was going to drop us off about one third of the way up the volcano. Past this point, the only way to get up to the crater is to hike up the slopes of the volcano. Look at the view. Now that we have a sleeping bag and a tent, we can need to carry up this volcano. It really starts to sink in that we're actually doing this. <laughs> Going to sleep on top of an active volcano. All right, we're about. Are we halfway up? The volcano? Almost, almost there, sir. Almost, almost there. Halfway. Almost halfway. And, uh, up. This is our guide. Hi. Well, my name is Max. I'm from Leon City here in Nicaragua. So today we're hiking Telica Volcano, one of the seven active volcanoes that we got here in our volcano range. Officially in Nicaragua, we got 19 volcanoes, only considering active. And well, we're here just hanging out today. Yeah, so. it's beautiful. Wow, the absolutely view is here. stunning. Getting to the edge of the crater. I'm excited. Oh, look at that. You can see there the crater just broke off. Oh. That is crazy. Okay. It's something else. Oh my god, guys. We made it. Look at this. There's all the smoke coming out of the crater. That's deep, that, that goes down very deep. This crater has two 700 meters wide. 700 two, meters? 700 meters wide, exactly. <gasps> and two, 200 meters deep. 200. So basically, what we hear down there, that's the sound of the magma. I mean, we cannot see it, but we can hear it. That's amazing. I don't know if you're gonna get something. Oh yeah. But let me tell you something. This is the only volcano in Nicaragua where you you will find someone selling beers <laughs> or something. Here. You want a beer? I want. I want a Coca Cola. Okay. Uh, how much is it? Cuánto cuesta? No voy a dejar ya. Ochenta y Eighty and ninety. Okay, yeah. Buena oficina aquí. Beer on a volcano. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, just Bless let me you. take a picture of you. Best beer ever. The guy just told us that every year there are two or three explosions. Not necessarily like full blown eruptions, but at least explosions. <laughs> Hopefully, not tonight. <laughs> or maybe just a really small one. And the Coca Cola guy over there says that some days you do still get to see the lava. If you're lucky, you need to be lucky. We might still see it when we come back in the morning. But even without it, I mean, I think this is so cool because you like, this looks and feels so much like an active volcano. So now we're gonna watch the sunset on the other side of the crater. Since we can't exactly walk across the crater, we're walking down a little bit to get around it. The last thing that I expected to see up here 
is cows. We're still right next to the crater. It's right there. So now if there is an explosion, you have like a cow barbecue, naturally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what about us? <laughs> us too. I don't like that. <laughs> I really love how this view so much. Lava oh, you love how this view. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> <laughs> I made her erupt with laughter. <laughs> you know what you get when you cross a volcano with a saxophone? A molten saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't do this when I'm walking uphill, you're killing me. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm slow. We're gonna no leave our sleeping bags and, and tent here and then hope the cows don't eat them because they're curious and hungry. And we're gonna watch the sunset over there. Yeah, right. If I'm being honest, when we didn't see the lava in the crater, I was really disappointed. I've always thought of lava as this raw display of nature's power that I really wanted to see with my own eyes, and so far, nothing. But it is this precise moment where I realized that the travel gods were in fact giving us something else instead. And maybe that was something that we needed more. Wow, look at that view. To simply spend time away from laptops, phones, the internet, Up here, next to the smoking crater of the Telica volcano, we were just people and cows talking, connecting, enjoying nature and mentally preparing for a night's sleep on top of this active volcano. Thank you. Thank you sir. Now that the sun has set and it's starting to get dark, it's kind of dawning on me that we're actually going to be sleeping underneath this crater here, like right next to it, which doesn't make a lot of sense from a survival standpoint because it has been known to be unpredictable. <laughs> this is our home for the night. It's time to move in, people. <laughs> That right there, that's the top of the crater. Apparently the tour company arranged for dinner to be prepared by locals who live in a small village at the base of the volcano. The lady of the house made us this fresh meal and then her husband actually carried just the food for the three of us up the volcano and then casually walked back down. That's so good after the hike. Grilled chicken. This is like Uber Eats, mm -hmm. the volcano version. There are four other people camping up here tonight and they invited us to join their campfire. So, Keen and yes. Mike. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. So Hello. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to you. Hi. Marshall. So you, you came from the United States. That's right. What state? From Massachusetts. Massachusetts. What city? Uh, Boston. 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 Okay. Every time you meet like a fellow traveler, kind of start swapping these stories about oh where have you been what have you done what are your plans etc and you always instantly feel connected to them because they're so into the same stuff as you they love travel they have so much in common with a total stranger just because you both enjoy to travel i like it. i can't believe we were sleeping tonight like we're in this little tent but then you think of where you actually are where this tent is it's like on top of an active volcano, we're basically lying on top of a gigantic ball of lava that can erupt at any moment. <laughs> when I let my brain really dwell on that and think about it, I feel this little twinge inside of me that's like, shouldn't we be panicking? This is not something people usually do. Maybe it's risky, maybe something is gonna happen, maybe something is gonna go wrong. But this is the whole point of going outside of the comfort zone. Like sometimes you just have to tell that little part of your brain to shut the heck up. Because <laughs> otherwise you're never gonna get to experience any of this cool stuff. Yeah, I love you. This has to be one of the best sunrises I've ever done in my entire life. 
that volcano behind us. It's amazing. And you can see a bunch of other volcanoes off in the distance as well. That one smoking over there, way in the back, is called Momotombo. From what I understand, it's erupting quite continuously. Only thing I'm missing right now is lava. But, but, I know of a place where we can normally pretty much be guaranteed to see the lava. Hey Kim, do you know what volcanoes eat for dessert? No. Baklava. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I know this is going to sound crazy, but to find the lava, we're actually going to have to get back to our car and drive it up an active volcano. Drive the car up towards the crater to see the lava. What followed was a wild ride. We hiked down the volcano, said goodbye to our guide, and hopped on a minibus back to Granada, where we left the van a few days ago. Right before getting on the minibus, Naik got pickpocketed in the bus station, which is the first time that has happened to us in five years of full-time travel. But we tried not to get caught up in negativity. It was only $70 after all, and probably the person who felt the need to take that money was really desperate. There he is, our home away from home. Well, our, just our home. Okay, Vinny, we've got a little mission for you. We are going to take you to see some lava, boy. All right, we're now in the middle of Nicaragua, about 20 kilometers south from the capital, Managua, and we're here to do something really, really unique. I'm aware that what I'm about to say right now is going to sound surreal, but we are currently driving to the top of one of the most active volcanoes in the world. This is the car park and that right there. Okay, so we're not seeing much yet, because right now there's a lot of smoke. It is said that if we wait here until it gets dark, we should be able to see actual glowing lava. So, sun is setting down the mountain there. It is really, really amazing. Like from here, you can see this small section of the caldera and you can literally see the lava bubbling. Like it is so cool. Sometimes there's a lot of smoke and we don't really see anything. And then there are these moments where you're like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm staring into the center of the earth. Like that's just nuts. Like we pay 10 bucks to come up here, which is nothing. Just oh, it's 10 bucks. No, yeah, true. <laughs> It's just so cool. It almost makes me feel small and insignificant, even though I'm quite tall and awesome. <laughs> I'm just so, so happy. 